identifiable with India-Pakistan rivalry and more specifically with uh, whatsoever is the Kashmir dispute, the unresolved situation uh, in and around Jammu and Kashmir. Um, of course, uh, this is uh, a, a, a seven decade long unresolved situation that has not been adequately addressed. And of course, uh, it's now seen as uh, one of the two longest uh, unresolved situations that are on the agenda of the United Nations. Again, um, in this period of seven decades, uh, Kashmir had been in the center stage, if not the cause of three and a half wars between India and Pakistan. And it also provided an impetus uh, for the nuclearization of South Asia. Uh, and therefore, I think uh, we can appreciate, understand as to why we go back to the stereotypes and insist that this question situation around Jammu and Kashmir as well, and it may have impact on a broader canvas at any time, not necessarily to our liking. Um, well, today, India-Pakistan rivalry um, uh, is, remains a fact on the, on the, on the, on the canvas. And uh, therefore, spotlight on Kashmir is uh, similarly um, as clear and as uh, focused as uh, we can possibly imagine. Um, of course, uh, the Kashmir situation has time and again uh, become a flashpoint, as we already uh, referred to, uh, to our good luck not a nuclear flashpoint. Uh, and, and what uh, we see today is uh, the sum total of seven decade long uh, where the situation can be influenced by action or inaction of the international community. And that too is one factor that uh, brings Kashmir into the spotlight or takes away the light and it can also have the potential for a longer and larger spread effect. And what we are witnessing today is the um, warming up of, of Ladakh border. And we also see a China factor into play. Uh, we give it any name, we give it any explanation, but in today's geopolitical scenario, uh, it's no more limited to India Pakistan rivalry. And therefore, uh, we also need to keep in view uh, that this flashpoint uh, that being the stereotype description that we've been giving can expand. And we already see how South China Sea uh, is warming up from Ladakh to South China Sea. None of us wants to have a war space. But then, of course, uh, uh, we need to put our legs on the real world and see how things are shaping and what it can possibly entail for our tomorrow and tomorrow of others in this broader region. Uh, of course, uh, uh, I, I'm not here to raise the specter of a larger war but we, we know, we know for sure that India has already slided faster into the Western orbit uh, because of the situation that had emerged. Uh, something that would have finally um, taken place or taken shape, uh, crystallized say, say a decade later has happened now. And therefore uh, there is always uh, a a precipitate, you know, it's getting into a sharper focus, the new realignments and how things 
can warm up. And what it all depends on uh, several other factors, unless the international community moves in and tries and diffuse the main course, the core issue here. Uh, I think uh, the most unsettling thing for us all uh, had been in the past one year, almost one year now, of uh, what we call the unilateralism displayed by uh, our neighbor, India. And that unilateralism may have different explanations, but it is certainly an assault on the Kashmiri people's identity of their personality, which was recognized in terms of international law. And the, 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 the assault comes with what we call the fragmentation of the personality that existed. And for that, by that token, a very visible attempt to dent the question at, on the tables that continues to be on the table. Uh, a fragmentation uh, that could lead up to demographic that rests upon what I like to call the best practices of Zionism, taking that cue and doing it, and implanting it into 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 German Kashmir society. So. Uh, I'm not into a blame game of the sorts, uh, and I do not think that this is the right time for this. But if you're talking of questions of war and peace, we also need to keep in view uh, that seven decade long failure to address the issue uh, has uh, relates to simple mathematics. I mean, it's the inability of the elites to address the core issue that is the people's right to preside over their destiny. And if you deny that, you get sucked into conflicts and conflicts within conflicts. And therefore, there is no end to it. And this is one frame. And then again, I think uh, that the uh, what is causing uh, the problem uh, compounding it further is the very fact that the latest assault relates to assault on the identity and an attempt aimed at uh, undoing of whatsoever are the rights already acknowledged. And again, this is the worst form of uh, unilateralism that flows from a major part syndrome of sorts. Uh, I think to come to the uh, concluding points, I should say that we, uh, while talking of war and peace and we're talking of uh, stabilization or destabilization of the region uh, or the broader on a broader canvas, I think we are essentially talking of one fifth of the humankind. And one fifth of the humankind uh, is, is hostage uh, to uh, this uh, unresolved situation because of a narrow application of the minds and the possibilities that exist. And there is an inability, there has been and there continues to be an inability on the part of political elites to lead the people to a pathway to peace and progress. Um, in this context, I think there is sort of a warning of sorts that we must keep in view uh, that since one fifth of humankind lives in a setting that is fraught with potential for destabilization. Kashmir is only the core issue in the arena, but there are factors, a host of factors that can be seen as enabling factors. They can become uh, lethal they can offer a situation, lead up to a situation. Say, for instance, there is a demographic explosion in this, in this South Asian region. There is a certain poverty level not found elsewhere. There is the least connectivity within the region, not nowhere else in the world. Uh, that that uh, denial of inter, intra-regional connectivity that continues to prevail 
and then there is a potential for what we call water wash. Uh, so you have the sparks here and there that can engulf the entire region into something bigger. But I think the worst thing that has happened uh, to the humankind within South Asia and in its periphery, and we would, uh, we would we don't have to wait for history to be written and to be to be cataloged to understand that that is the rise of fascism in South Asia, and that is where uh, the. Uh, major power syndrome is overtaken by the fascist inclinations and the decisions are taken by uh, by the motivation by the driving force of which is faith based that comes with, uh, with 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 the notion of bringing an end for all times to come for any dissent for for the people who think on the other lines and i think that has caused I think it's not just the ideological dimensions, ideological dimension. For example, I don't want to go into individuals, but uh, the U.S. State Department, other institutions uh, are, have always been there. But the president chain and the positions uh, are not always the same. So the behavior patterns uh, uh, of a tea boy uh, who always taught in his teenages and in his youth to, to run, unfold a, an ideological dimension, a faith based to eliminate all others. You can't have uh, a break on his impulse uh, to, uh, to, to engage in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a conflict. So I think uh, it's not just uh, the simplistic term India-Pakistan rivalry. In today's context, we need to invoke international community uh, in a manner uh, to, to, to interest them. Because if they, if they want the, this not to spread, I know that the Chinese have a target to achieve and they are not in for a war. Uh, if there is a war, it is imposed by the new reconfiguration of powers in this region and the impulses that it would uh, generate. So I don't want to monopolize on time. What I'm trying to suggest is that uh, it is the right time to address Kashmir at least so that the other enabling factors that have a destabilizing potential, do not add up to the conflict. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your time.